So extending on the fields topic from the previous video in this playlist, another thing you can do with fields and something that people are obviously going to be interested in getting set up is working with damage to damage your destructible objects. By the end of this video, you'll be able to set something up that looks a little bit like this, where we can either apply damage through field actors within the level or by coming in and using some kind of weaponry and using it that way. So just a quick prerequisite for what you might need to have installed to get this set up if you didn't watch the previous videos, if you're just jumping straight in for damage. Inside of your project, if you haven't worked with fields before, you'll need to go into edit and plugins and just make sure that you have the field plugin enabled. So that's gonna be the field system for the chaos system. And this is currently in beta, so it's not fully enabled by default, even if in 4.26, the chaos is enabled by default, the field system so far isn't. So make sure you come in, enable this, restart your project, and then you'll be ready to follow along. I'll also be going into a little bit of detail in how I've got this working with the weapons. But in short, all I've done to get the first person weapon included is I've come down to the add import button. I've chosen to add a feature or content pack, and <laughs> for some reason it's not working here, uh, but I've just chosen the first person blueprint example, and I've tidied things up a little bit in there. And this gives you some default line tracing uh, weapon damage to apply, which will be super useful. You could do this with your third person or any kind of project you have going, as long as you have a character you can control, which has the ability to fire some type of damage, which I'm not going to go into, but uh, I will cover that very briefly where it's relevant for spawning the field. So inside of the blueprints and the chaos folder, I've got two different types of damage field here. So I have a standard damage field, which is the field you can see here in the level. I have a few things exposed and we'll see how they're set up inside of the blueprint in a moment. And then I have a BP underscore weapon damage field, which is very much the same. Uh, but it just doesn't have the delay and it has a much shorter lifespan and you'll see why uh, when we start implementing this. So if we get started with how you may just want to apply something in the level which will maybe cause damage at some point when it's triggered or after a delay for something like a, a sequence or some kind of cinematic, that would be using the damage field like this. So what I have here, um, again to create this, this is just a field system component. So this was created by coming in with the field plugin enabled right-clicking, creating blueprint class, searching for field, and we can see here the field system actor. Select that, and I've just named this BP underscore damage field. With that done, inside of here, you'll have the field system component, and I've just added a field system to this. So this is the one that I'm using universally for the entire project. And again, to create this, if you're not familiar, I've done this inside of my chaos folder, right-click in here, go to physics, and select field system. So nice and simple. Then to get the damage working, what I've done is I've added a delay on the event begin play. I've promoted this to a public float named delay before damage, and I've set this to two seconds. And then the important thing here is on the field system component, we're using the apply physics field function. We of course want to set this to be enabled. And then for the drop down target, I've set this to the external cluster strain. So we've got a lot of options here. In the previous video, we saw how to set things to be static or uh, disabled. We want to set this to be a cluster strain, which is going to be what causes the damage. And then just moving across a little bit here, we've got the options from a radial fall off that we want to use. Again, these are set at default. I haven't changed any of the properties apart from the field system here. Uh, all of these are left as default. We want to apply a magnitude, which is the damage we'll be applying. So I've set this to 5,000. And again, I've promoted this to a public variable so that we can see this in the editor and change this before runtime, just to allow for some kind of quick and easy uh, prototyping and testing. Then the final component I've added is a sphere component. So this is just a sphere collider. So it has no visual representation, which means again, when we press play, that will disappear and we won't have to see the uh, a static mesh or anything which is causing the damage there, but it will give us the option to set the scale of this. So I've left this at the standard 32 sphere radius that it starts at, and I'm using that sphere radius as the radius for where the damage should be applied. So kind of two nice uses there. It has that visual representation in the editor, and it already has a radius for us to use. And then I'm using the world location for the position to apply this damage. And again, the fall off here is set to none. So that's just hooked up into the field input, and that is pretty much it. That is the destruction field being applied. And what I've done here is I've just put two of these together. So one will fracture the wing, one will fracture it from the hip downwards. And you can see they kind of take effect when that starts off. You can see the wing got detached first or separately, and then everything crumbled kind of together, which looks pretty cool. 
So that is the standard damage field which you can just easily place in a level. For the weapon damage, like I've said, this is different uh, because it has a very short lifetime. So I think for the damage field, if you go to the main properties over here and search for life, this has been set to exist for three seconds. And then after it's caused its damage, I'm essentially selling it to go away. Another way you could do this is to just call the destroy function when this is uh, kind of run its thing. In comparison for the damage field weapon, if we search for lifespan, this is existing for 0.1 second, just because when you're firing, you don't want these to kind of stack up on each other or have any collisions with each other. They don't really have a reason to be around once they've caused the damage, they can again just go away. So I'm essentially giving this enough time to call its function and then we're getting rid of it. But besides that, it's doing a very similar thing. So in fact, the, the start details here, uh, again, I've just copied the other class. So we've got the same things to begin with. We've got the field system component, a sphere component for the location and radius to cause that damage, which we can see here. So you can copy these two functions from the other class we've just touched on. The only difference is I didn't set the magnitude to a public value because we're not going to be setting that. That's going to be kind of hard coded unless you wanted to call that from your weapon function. But again, you can expose and expand on the way that this logic is set up if you wanted. For the physics field, again, it's using the external cluster stream. So like I said, pretty much exactly the same there. And then this is all really optional, but I will go into this because it, it just makes things look a little bit more interesting. But this is just adding some physics to add some force or push those fractured pieces away. So what I'm doing here, we've got the field system component. So again, that's the main one up here. I'm applying another physics field, but this one is again, obviously going to be enabled. This one is applying the linear velocity. So this is pushing something. The field that we're doing, the, the way that we're passing in the field information here, uh, we'll start in this section here and I'll zoom in so you can see it. But I basically created a radial vector and passed in a force magnitude value. The force magnitude I've set to 2000. And this is going to start at the position of the world location of the sphere again. This is going to apply 2000 units of force. We're then using an operator field and we're calling the set operator field function from this. The magnitude here has just been left at one and we are using the multiply operation. Uh, this is the right field being applied that we can see in this box. And then for the left field, so we're just going to go down a bit here so we can see the left field. This is using a radial fall off. So all of these, again, are just components over in the left hand section here. So this is going to be a radial fall off and we're calling the set radial fall off function. These values have all been left at default. So the magnitude, min, max range and the default value have all been left as they were. Set the fall off to be linear. And again, I'm using that sphere component that we've got the collider, which just to reconfirm is also set to overlap all or it should be set to overlap all. And again, this is just to stop things from clustering up and uh, actually physically causing any type of force or anything. So we're gonna set these to be overlapping all. This is going to get the radius again. So we are ready by using the radius details up here, we have full control over the radius of our radial fall off and the location which it happens is going to be based on the world location of that sphere component. That's then being passed into the left field. We're controlling the right field as we've just covered a moment ago. And this is being passed in to the add physics field which is adding our force. So again, just a quick demonstration of how this looks. And I'm kind of fighting against time there. So if I go back into the other maps, I've got my fields combined, which also works quite well, as this is pretty much the same, but it doesn't have the default damage actors. So I can come in now and hopefully I've got enough kind of room to start shooting off uh, certain bits. And if I didn't, then what I could do is come in to the, uh, the weapon damage actor and change the radius of the sphere. So I'm gonna try and picking off just the wings uh, because of course, if I shoot the bottom of the body, everything is going to crumble below that. Okay, so it kind of worked. I think the force blew the wing into the other wing there. But yeah, I think the forces are a little bit too high and they're blowing things into each other, but you can see that's still working. Uh, where that sphere is very quickly being spawned is uh, kind of a debug for us to show us where we're hitting. That will then disappear and cause its damage. Okay, so the final thing, which I almost forgot to show, is the logic going on in the player class. So as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, all I've done is imported by going to add import new content, the new feature pack, and going to the first person project into uh, into this project. This gives you the BP underscore player. I've renamed the, the character class that comes with that to BP underscore player. This is the one which is just a set of arms. And in this version, it doesn't fire a physical projectile. So there's no blueprint projectile being fired out. This is just doing a line trace. It's been a while since I've been using the templates. I can't remember if that is a recent change or if that's because I didn't create a first person project from 
the default option, but I remember you used to get the yellow projectile. This one's working with a trace. Either will work. And I'll give you a quick hint at the end of this how you might be able to get this working if you have the uh, physical projectile being shot. Uh, but really, all of the logic which is controlling the destruction is happening here. So when you press fire, we're going through the line trace. We're playing the animation montage. Uh, we're going to get the location. We're at the kind of standard stuff here for the line trace. And then right at the end of this, what this is doing here is uh, before the check for whether this is simulating physics, uh, because I don't technically need anything physics-based to be working on this, as all of the impulse and everything is being handled in the destruction class or the class that we created a little bit earlier in the chaos section, the, uh, the damage field here. So what I've done is just before that, I've placed a sequence node. And this means that regardless of whether or not this is a physics simulated object, we're going to come down here and we're going to try and do this spawning of the damage field. Now, of course, if we're not hitting something which is chaos, you can do some checks to make sure it is a chaos class or a chaos geometry. Uh, but in this case, this is only existing for 0.1 second. It's not going to happen too often. So this should be perfectly fine. All I'm doing is we're just spawning in this class. If the chaos destruction system can be affected, then this class will. If not, then it's going to stop existing after part of a second. So that is really all I'm doing. That is the only change that I've needed to make to the first person class. And this is the line trace version again. So of course, if you're using the version which has the physical projectile being shot, all you want to do is something very similar. Uh, when you have the on hit detected before the projectile goes out of existence, you want to do something similar. So check for any ir irrelevant logic that may be happening within the, uh, the hit section of the projectile finding something. And then just place your spawn actor and choose the damage field just before the projectile is taken out of existence or as soon as it hits that object that you've just found. And I'm just using the location here, which is the end of the line trace. And of course, if you're using the physical projectile, the location would be the impact point. So that's really all you need to do to get this kind of um, system working where you can come in and shoot things to cause some destruction. So nice and simple. So they were just some other examples of how you can use the fields inside of the new chaos system. In the previous topic, I covered how to create these kind of structural fields, which are keeping things in place and then controlling how damage or the, uh, the fractured pieces are behaving after they've been fractured and are kind of interacting with the world. And then this is another way that we can start using the fields to apply damage and move things around, adding force and interact with our destructible chaos geometry a little bit more. So as I mentioned previously, if you wanted to get hold of the project that I've been using here, I'll be placing this in the downloadable section on the Patreon support page. So if you did want to consider supporting the channel over on Patreon, you'll get access to goodies like the existing project files, as well as some early access to upcoming videos. If you're unable to do that, but still wanted to support the channel, then do consider leaving a like and sharing the video around. That really helps the channel to grow. And of course, subscribing and hitting the notification bell just to be kept up to date with any of the weekly content coming from any of the playlists on this channel, covering many things game dev related. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.